This man is not simply a serene old man. He is, above all, a yogi, a very great yogi, Lopon Sonam Zangpo. There are only three young people who, having successfully passed all the severe tests imposed on them, have been chosen to become disciples and allowed to receive their initiation from him. Initiation, in other words, the beginning, admission to the path, and also ordination, the essential transmission of a spiritual influence, of a force the disciple will bring into play by means of all the exercises and techniques of the yogic discipline, bringing to maturity the seed that has been sown inside him. It is certain that the guru, the master, is the one who guides, encourages and teaches. But he is, above all, the one who gives birth to a new life, who brings into the world a world that is not of this world. It is out of time, blessed, limitless, made of stillness that is more active than any movement, made of silence that is more vibrant than any words. At the other end of the Himalayas, Abu Rinpoche is at present the most revered of all the Tibetan yogis who have succeeded in escaping their country to take refuge in India. He has forgotten his age, which is guessed to be about 90, and has arrived at the highest summit to which yoga can lead. He also is a truly qualified master who can lead a disciple all the way to the end of his journey, to the other bank of the ocean of sorrow. But he too, as all other true yogis, restricts his teachings to the initiated only. Tibetan yoga has taken on a form that is quite different from Hindu yoga, whose postures and elementary breathing exercises are popularized today in bookshop window displays everywhere. However, amateurs must be warned that the Tibetan's yoga is far from being put up for sale on the worldwide market of orientalist fashion and spiritual gimmicks. You may only see certain exercises that are amongst the most simple and the first to be taught. And yet, only a few years ago, in Tibet itself, nobody, not even a monk who is not a yogi, would have been allowed to have a glimpse of these movements and postures that were kept in absolute secrecy and anyone trying to watch them in secret would have been severely punished. All physical yoga is based on a paradox. To transcend the mortal body, to go beyond the limitations of that body, by devoting to that very same body one's attention and efforts. For yoga is one aspect of tantrism, and according to tantrism, nothing Absolutely nothing must be refused, denied, or repressed. Everything must be accepted, integrated, and transformed. Like nature changes coal into diamonds. Like the alchemists speak of changing lead into gold. As secret as the science of yoga is kept, however heroic the yogi's asceticism, as extraordinary and even miraculous as the results may be, these yogis are sages who stay in perfect harmony with what ordinary everyday life entails for every man. These two yogis, one from Ladakh and one from Bhutan, whose vision is beyond the veil of appearances, know above all things that they are one. They are playing their part perfectly, spontaneously, freely. They are completely aware of the present moment and are overflowing with serenity, joy, kindness and compassion. For they are free from any trace of the past, whether conscious or subconscious, and they are also free from the slightest preoccupation with the future. This magnificent doji that is carefully protected in an antique silk drape has been held in Milarepa's own hands the founder of the order of yogis. This is why it is handled with such respect and brought up to the forehead as a sign of veneration. 
This dorchi is the emblem of supreme power, power which, for Tibetan sages, is always related to compassion. Not love that is founded on emotional impulse, capable of becoming its opposite and giving birth to selfishness, jealousy, hatred and despair. No, love that takes root in the realization of the unity of all beings. Having died completely the death of his own egoism and of the belief in his individuality separate from others, the yogi can say, because I no longer am, I am everybody, I am everything. To those who thirst, and the ascetic rises to the plane of meditation without form, to the perception of emptiness, or shunyata, which is the key to Tibetan Buddhism. In India, amongst the refugees, as in Tibet itself around the big monasteries, small cells have been built, where a monk can go on retreat and live as a hermit for days, weeks, months, and sometimes even years. During this time, he sees no one and receives his food through a hatch. The monks meditate in these tiny cabins. Today, they have allowed us a glimpse of their world, a world of peace and inner vision. Some are still beginners, while others are advanced initiates. But all of them aspire to the same realization, that of becoming Buddhas themselves, not only for their own emancipation, but for the welfare of all beings.